Hi guys. The claim here is Maurice Bouquet was a great scientist, an Egyptologist, and someone who used science to prove the Quran. Reality, a greedy liar who probably didn't even know how much he was damaging Islam. So what am I going to do in this video? Now this inscrupulous charlatan by the name of Bouquet requires several videos actually to cover some of the claims. So I'm going to start off by looking at the person and then go into the individual claims in separate segments. Maurice Bouquet was born almost 100 years ago in France and in 1973 went on to become a medical doctor and later a physician at the court of King Faisal in KSA in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. So he was a doctor and a little bit like sort of as a hobby interested in Egyptology. And no, he did not receive any Nobel Prizes, not one. And no, he was not celebrated as an expert of anything by any non-Muslim. So what happened some 40 years ago is that a Muslim from Yemen called Zindani went to Cairo, was rejected as resident scholar, and through some connections, I'm not going to go up, he ended up in Saudi with a rich sponsor named Osama bin Laden, where he found a corrupt doctor at the court of King Faisal, our Dr. Bouquet. Now together, they went through the Quran with a fine comb, with the help of several Quran schools, and identified some areas or even single words which could be twisted to have a scientific ring to it. And these I will address in separate videos. Like, you know, just as an example, the King of France will go out on his balcony and admire his expansive gardens. And they were vast, they were huge, they were immense. And that's why the authors of the Quran wrote that their God created an expansive, a huge, a vast universe. And that is what you will read in the older translations. But now, because in Arabic, we need to go a little bit into the linguistics here, an active participle can have a verbal meaning, the creation of an expansive universe using mental gymnastics can change into expanding the universe. So, after Hubble released his finding in I don't know, 1929, if I'm not mistaken, regarding the galaxies and the increasing distance between them, this is what Bouquet did. He changed the Musayuna, the created and expansive, or the, the vast universe, into steadily expanding universe. And then into, we are surely the expander. And even though we found out that the speed of expansion is increasing, we still have these interpretations, these, these so-called translations, which still use the steadily expanding it. Now, this is obviously wrong and demonstrates the dangers of hitching onto science where conclusions can be more precise over time. So these magic textual transformations, like, like this one with the expansive into expanding, these are now hailed as scientific miracles in the Quran, where scientific findings were suddenly present in this old text. So what Bikai did using these well, gymnastics, mental gymnastics, he wrote a book, this the Bible, the Quran, and science. Now, in addition to his handsome income from Bin Laden, this washed more bucks into his bank account. And then he went on to expand this nonsense and deception to pretend he was some sort of Egyptologist. And he wrote stories about, for example, Haman, a character mentioned in the Quran, and the different pharaohs or pharaohs with their mummified bodies. All this was refuted, ridiculed, where people eventually called this dishonest practice bouquetism. <laughs> that was how stupid this was. Now, even though all this was easily debunked and shown to be tricks and simply matching modern findings with some vague expressions in an old text, many Muslims embraced this anyway, desperate for any kind of confirmation that their text, this, this Quran, was something special, which of course it is not. Bouquet was so not convinced by Islam and the text that he remained a Christian and is buried in a Catholic cemetery in France. And you have religion. If there is something uh, which is not in accordance, it's the religion who said the truth. Now, if Muslims were to develop critical thinking skills, they would ask themselves some very simple questions. Why would we wait for non-Muslims to discover something if the discovery was in the Quran all along? 
Why are essential discoveries or inventions such as germs, electricity or a bicycle not mentioned? How come that out of around a thousand Nobel laureates, there's only a single one, there's one single Muslim recipient of a scientific Nobel Prize? Why? Why, why would a god, a supernatural, undetectable entity, require confirmation by science, a human invention, which then examines and explains natural phenomena which might have been explained by this god? So why would he need human sciences? And why do so many Muslims accept a claim where an expression in the Quran is allegedly supported by scientific findings, but refuse to accept when scientific findings show that the Quran is clearly wrong. Now, since Muslim apologists are unable to apply critical thinking, I will take some of the claims from bouquetism and debunk them, i.e. show them to be wrong while ridiculing the concept. So thank you for your interest, and if you like what I'm doing, give me a thumbs up and subscribe. If you hate this, by all means, give it a thumbs down, but I encourage you to give me some feedback why you hated it. Thank you.